Ever wondered how data is stored and retrieved so quickly in databases or caches? The answer lies in a technique called hashing. Hashing is a fundamental method used in data structures to efficiently map keys to values, allowing for speedy retrieval, insertion, and deletion operations. The magic behind hashing involves two key components, a hash function and a hash table. The hash function takes a key and transforms it into a hash code or an index. This index is then used to directly access the corresponding value in the hash table. Picture a massive library and a librarian who can instantly tell you the exact shelf and position of the book you're looking for, no matter how many books there are. That's the power of hashing. It's like having a super librarian for your data. So let's delve into the world of hashing and its components. The first thing we need to understand in hashing is the hash function. This is the magic wand that takes a key as input, and in the blink of an eye, computes a hash code. What's a hash code, you ask? Well, it's typically an integer value that will serve as the index or position of our data in the hash table. Now, a good hash function doesn't play dice with the universe. It's deterministic, meaning it's as reliable as the sunrise. Give it the same key, and it will always return the same hash code. No surprises there. This repeatability is crucial because it ensures that we can always find our data in the same place we left it. But life's not always a bed of roses. We sometimes encounter something called collisions. Picture this. You're at a party, and two guests show up wearing the exact same outfit. Awkward, right? Similarly, in hashing, a collision occurs when different keys produce the same hash code. Suddenly, we have two pieces of data vying for the same spot in our hash table. Not ideal, is it? That's why a good hash function also tries to minimize collisions. It's like the perfect party planner, ensuring that each guest gets their unique spot and the chances of a fashion faux pas are as low as possible. The more it can do this, the better it is. But remember, no hash function is perfect. Collisions are inevitable. That's why we have collision resolution strategies, but we'll dive into that in a later scene. So let's take a moment to appreciate the hash function. It's the unsung hero in our hashing journey, the orchestra conductor ensuring each piece of data knows its place and can be retrieved when needed. It's fast, it's efficient, and it's reliable. The hash function is a critical part of hashing, as it determines where our data will be stored. And with that, we're ready to move on to the next component of hashing, the hash table. But that's a story for another scene. Now that we know how a hash function works, let's talk about where it stores the data, the hash table. A hash table, at its most basic, is an array-like data structure that houses key-value pairs. Think of it as a storage warehouse with numerous compartments or buckets. The location of each item or key-value pair in this warehouse is decided by the hash function. The hash function, as we've learned, takes a key and generates a hash code. This hash code is not just a random number, but a calculated determinant that decides where the key-value pair will be stored in the hash table. It's like a warehouse manager who, upon receiving a new item, decides exactly where it should be stored. Each spot or compartment in the hash table is an index, and each index is referred to as a bucket. The hash function assigns each key-value pair to a bucket in the hash table based on the calculated hash code, ensuring that each item has a specific location. Let's say we have a key-value pair where the key is apple and the value is fruit. The hash function might generate a hash code of, let's say, 23. This means that our key value pair, apple fruit, will be stored at index 23 in the hash table. The bucket at this index will hold our key value pair, making retrieval, insertion, and deletion operations quick and efficient. But it's not always smooth sailing. Sometimes our hash function might generate the same hash code for two different keys. This is called a collision. But don't worry, there are techniques to handle these collisions which we'll discuss in the next scenes. In essence, the hash table is a dynamic and efficient storage system. It's where our data lives and breathes, all neatly organized by the hash function. It's the heart of hashing, making the retrieval, insertion, and deletion of data a breeze. The hash table is the place where our key value pairs reside, thanks to the hash function. With a hash function and a hash table, we can now perform operations like insertion, search, and deletion. Let's start with insertion, Suppose we want to add a key value pair to our hash table. We apply our hash function to the key, which in turn gives us an index. This index is the location in our hash table where we'll store the key value pair. If the bucket at the index is empty, we're good to go. But what if it's already occupied? Ah, 
This is what we call a collision. But don't worry, we have strategies to resolve such situations. We could use chaining, where each bucket contains a linked list of key value pairs that hash to the same index. Or we could use open addressing, where we find another available location within the hash table to store our colliding key value pair. Next up is the search operation. Searching for a key in a hash table is a breeze. We simply apply our hash function to the key we're looking for, which gives us an index. We then check the bucket at that index. If the key is present there, we've found our value. If the bucket is empty or the key isn't there, it means the key isn't in the hash table. Then we have the deletion operation. To remove a key value pair from our hash table, we first need to find it. We use our search operation for this. Once we've located the key, we remove the corresponding value from the bucket. If the bucket becomes empty after the deletion, it might be marked as available for reuse, depending on our collision resolution strategy. These operations make the hash table a powerful tool for data storage and retrieval. With the right hash function and collision resolution strategy, we can achieve near constant time performance for these operations, making hash tables an indispensable tool in modern computing. Hashing is not just a theoretical concept, it has practical applications in many areas of computing. Let's delve into a few of these, starting with databases. Hashing is a key player in implementing hash indexes for efficient database queries. This allows for a quick lookup of records based on key values. Imagine being able to sift through millions of records in a database in a fraction of a second. That's the power of hashing in the world of databases. Moving on to caching, hash tables come into play here as well. They help store frequently accessed data for quick retrieval. Think about a popular website that you visit often. The speed at which the website loads on your device is partly due to a caching mechanism powered by hashing. It stores the elements of the website that are accessed often, making your browsing experience smoother and faster. In the realm of data structures, hash tables form the bedrock for implementing various other structures such as sets, maps and associative arrays. These structures in turn form the backbone of many software applications we use daily. For example, a map data structure, powered by hashing, could be used to store and quickly retrieve user settings in a software application. Lastly, let's talk about cryptographic hashing. Hash functions are used in cryptographic algorithms to generate secure hash values. These values play a crucial role in data integrity verification and password hashing. When you set a password for an online account, it is stored as a hashed value, not as the actual password. This adds a layer of security, preventing unauthorized access to your account. So, as you can see, hashing is a versatile technique, with applications ranging from speeding up database queries and website loading times, to securing your online accounts. It's a fundamental part of data structures and algorithms, and it plays a crucial role in the efficient functioning of modern computing systems. Hashing, therefore, is a versatile technique with a wide range of applications. So, we've covered a lot of ground today. We delved into the intricacies of hashing, a fundamental technique used in data structures. We unpacked how a hash function works, taking a key as input and computing a hash code, which then determines the index in a hash table where the key value pair is stored. We explored the hash table itself, a vital data structure that stores key value pairs, and the operations that are performed on it, including insertion, search, and deletion. We saw how collisions can occur and how they are resolved using strategies such as chaining and open addressing. We also discussed the many applications of hashing, from databases to caching, data structures, and even cryptographic hashing. It's clear that hashing plays a pivotal role in modern computing, enabling fast and efficient access to data. Remember the power of hashing lies in its ability to provide fast and efficient access to data. So the next time you marvel at the speed of data retrieval, remember to thank hashing.